Hey, everyone on YouTube, and welcome back to a new video with Rams fan YT. <clears throat> in today's video, we will be going through what is, in my opinion, the best transfer in step two or tier six of the National League North and South. I've slightly mixed them up. I'm not going to go straight through National League North and then straight through National League South. Instead, I'm going to be doing it in alphabetical order of all the clubs. And again, slight caveat. This obviously the transfer window in this level of football very different, still open for much more long time. It's still open to this day. So if any transfers have happened really in the last few days that I haven't catched, then so be it to be honest. Because this took a long time to research. Let's start with my beloved Derbyshire with Alfred and Town. Uh, they signed Ryan Taylor, and he will add some valuable experience to Alfredton's squad after some years in the EFL and help Grimsby to be promoted from a National League in 2022, scoring against Wrexham in the playoffs. <clears throat> he also appeared in the League 2 playoff finals twice with Rotherham United and Newport County. This experience of promotion may be the sparkle needed to get the Reds into the playoffs this season. Avely Lionel Ainsworth He's been brought in as a dual role of a player and assistant manager, and this means he will be respected by his peers, and he certainly has earned the right. Having amassed over 450 appearances in his career, which started at Derby in 2005, he has since gone on to play from the Championship down to Tier 8. He's even appeared on the European stage in the Europa League with Motherwell, as well as appearing for England's under-16s and under-19s. Over the years, his goal output has improved as well, and in 2021-22, he was Haybridge Swift's highest goal scorer. Banbury United, Jack Davis. During the 2021-22 season, he was on loan with local rivals Oxford City, where he stood out for his outstanding performances in defence, which during a 19 appearance streak in the National League South, he kept six clean sheets as part of a back three. Having spent a gap on loan with Concord Rangers, he returned to Oxford City and played an important role in the playoffs, scoring against Worthing and helping Oxford secure promotion to Step 1 for the first time in their history. Bath City, Ben Morgan. The 24-year-old defender has just come off a successful spell at Gloucester City. An imposing defender, he started his career at Swansea before moving to Bristol Rovers and then signed for Gloucester in 2020, where he played a large part of his success in reaching the playoffs in the National League North. Bishop Stortford, Billy Cracknell. He returns to the club after a loan spell in 2021-22, where he scored a goal in the playoff semi-final against his next club, Chessant. He's arguably quite experienced in Northern League for a 21-year-old, having made 76 appearances in Northern League, including two in the National League South. Blythe Spartans, Harry Arneson. The way he conducts himself is likeable. He looks like a really, really good player and is going to strengthen their midfield options. He prefers to play as a more offensive midfielder, which enables Nicky De Verdrix to play a bit deeper, but he can also cover that area if needs be. I'll mention that he is the son of Carlisle United legend Paul Arneson, but that shouldn't distract, detract from the um, player that he is in his own right. I actually saw P Blythe prior to them signing him. that He was in the FA Cup home tie against Works of Town, and quite frankly, they got overrun in the um, midfield for about 60 minutes of a game. So hopefully he can help them in that regard. <laughs> Boston United, Michael Bostwick. Boswick can operate in the centre of defence or in midfield. He has over 630 appearances in the EFL or conference. He boasts a mighty trophy cabinet with two FA trophies and a further runners-up, three times League 2 promotions, two EFL trophies and a conference premier. He's also won lots of personal accolades with Fans League 2 Player of the Year, two Player of the Player two Play of the Year awards and has appeared in both League 2 and the conference team of the season. He's another versatile player who can cover a number of positions, but I mainly imagine he'll cover as centre-back or in a holding midfield role. Here he is very dominant in both boxes and is airily very physical. He'll have plenty of steel to the squad. He gives 100% every game, no matter whether in the Championship, as he was a few seasons ago, or in the National League North. And I remember when he, he, he was a bit of a um, legend, really, at Burton Albion. Well, 
legends probably a bit too much but he was certainly a mainstay in their squad for a couple of seasons that i remember him regularly being um, heralded as one of the better players brackley town morgan roberts morgan had a spell with the club back in 2020 on loan from northampton town he then moved to Branbury United, helping him get promoted for National League North, scoring 10 goals in 27 appearances. And he continued that fine form into last season in the National League North, picking up the player of the month of August in the National League North. Morgan is a really exciting player who will um, bring options for them in numerous positions. He's ready to hit the ground running and to gain the fans' approval. Braintree Town, Reggie Lamb. He is officially the most capped Bermudan player for the international side. Last season, he gained promotion with AFC Sudbury, proving he still has a winning mentality. He provides an attacking threat across a number of forward positions. He's proven at this level, having played in both in leagues above and below. He is a terrific team player, carries the ball well and is technically excellent. He will excite the fans and contribute greatly to the team. Buxton Curtis Weston. The veteran midfielder comes off a successful season, achieving promotion to the National League with AFC Fylde. Before that, he made 147 appearances for the Chesterfield, and he was also won promotion from the Conference and League Two. In fact, he became the youngest debutant in the FA Cup final of all time, when only aged 17, he came off the bench for Millwall against Manchester United in the 2004 FA Cup final. He's hard-working and keen to impress. Chelmsford City, Mo Dabre. During a loan spell in 2022, he reached the playoffs with Chippenham Town, scoring a goal in the promotion competition. With his last club being Worthing, he looked like their best player every time he put on the shirt. He scores goals, does goal line clearances and covers the whole pitch. Mo's got a bit of everything. He's a young, athletic and energetic player. He's also strong for someone of his side. He, size. Sorry, He's really strong and can keep the hold of the ball really well. Mo can play in multiple positions. He can play as a holding midfielder, midfielder player and an attacking midfield player. Uh, in both games he played against Chelmsford last season, he ended up playing wide left and he can also play wide right. So he can really play anywhere across the midfield in an attacking sense and in a defensive sense. He's a player that will cover a lot and he wants to try and get back to the football league. Whether that is the goal of this club it is something different, but he will try his best. Chester Charlie Caton. Charlie Caton is a left-footed young centre forward who spent last season on loan with Chester, so the fans will know his attributes already. The Caton is a natural finisher, having been the top scorer at Shrewsbury's under-18s and chipped in with seven goals in 26 appearances with the Seals last season. He has made several appearances for the Welsh national youth teams and he likes to make runs in behind and score goals. He likes to hold the ball up for his team. He plays a lot, really, like his idols Robin Van Persie and Didier Drogba. Chippenham Town, Aaron Amand E. Holloway. Aaron joins the Bluebirds after a successful season with the Bulls, having a standout season in the National League North, being named Player of the Season. Aaron has also made appearances for the under-17s and under-19s of the Welsh national team. He was a solid player in the EFL, having made appearances in both League 1 and League 2, and he comes in with scoring 13 goals in the EFL. A big 6 foot 2 inch player is always going to command attention, but what is noticeable about Aaron is his athleticism and experience to go along with his presence and size. Aaron has a versatility that is invaluable at this level. He can play both ends of the pitch and last season mainly operated as a centre-back. He has the power and the pace but also a really good footballing intelligence and skill. Surely Mark Ellis. A lad who is eager to impress, someone who simply loves being on the football field and a bustling centre-back who attacks every ball in each header like it's his lass. It's simply impossible not to love his enthusiasm every time he puts on the shirt. He comes in now with much more experience, having appeared in a league's ranging from League One to the Conference, and he has some success, is such as winning the EFL Trophy and gaining promotion with Shrewsbury to League One. 
Curzon Ashton, Alex Kenyon. Having amassed over 350 career appearances and gaining promotion from League Two in 2021, he's an aggressive midfield player and likes to win the ball back, keep the ball and get things ticking over. He's a leader and demands much from others around him and wants to work hard and get stuck in both on the pitch and on the training ground. He pushes to get the maximum from himself and also those around him. That's what's needed, a player who will roll up their sleeves and give it a right go. He does that, but is also a good footballer and has plenty of experience. He provides a class and calmness that comes from playing many league games. Are we recording? Uh, yes, we still are. Uh, on to Darlington, Jordan Musto. Jordan is a very experienced left back uh, with a quality left foot and a very strong athlete. It's something they've missed in that position. He can also play left centre-back, along with left midfield or left forward even, which is a plus for such a small squad. The fullback has been a journeyman, being a globetrotter, having played for clubs in Ireland, Belgium, Finland, Romania and Oman. He's also made 61 appearances in the EFL. Dartford Mitchell Beanie. Mitchell is a great pro and is looking like he's made himself number one at Dartford. He's won the under-21s uh, Premier League and has appeared in Europe while at Chelsea's academy and also appeared for England's under-19s. He's also played in the EFL and the League of Ireland. He's also been in non-league from the National League down to the Isthmian League and last season was a regular for Concord Rangers in the National League South. Dover Athletic, Roman Charles Cook. He comes in as an unknown gambit all for many people. However, he has made an appearance for Granada and is considering a rising star in that country. He's had stints across non-league over the last season, most recently with Harrow Borough, and he's a right-back who is fairly physical and likes a challenge. He's young, so will provide that enthusiasm which comes with youth as well. Eastbourne Borough, Stefan Vukoje. He plays in a lovely way. He is an exciting player who will lift the crowd every time he's on the ball. He is a forward but is also comfortable playing in midfield and fits perfectly into the style of play trying to be implemented there. Farnborough, Adam, Adam Mecky. The skillful winger comes in with plenty of experience in the National League especially. In 2016-17, he was runners-up in the National League with Tranmere Rovers. And in 2017-18, he was runners-up in the FA Trophy with a man of a match performance with Bromley. Adam, therefore, has significant experience at this level and the level above. He will add versatility into how they play this season. He is a strong, tricky winger who scores goals, having scored 22 goals over a 270-game career. Varsity Celtic, Jordan Carroll. Jordan is an exciting talent and fits the philosophy of bring young talent in uh, and work from that. However, he comes in with a couple of experience, seasons of experience as well, with both Shamrock Rovers, Radcliffe Borough and Flint Town. He has the potential to become a first team regular. Jordan is a very talented young player. His versatility, quality and composure on the ball, which allows him to play in a number of positions, and that versatility makes him a valuable addition to their squad. Gloucester City, Max Ram. Max is a 22-year-old defender who can play centrally or at right back. He's just come off a spell with Inverness Caledonian Thistle, and he's also played at this level, having spent a season in the National League South with Hungerford Town. Hampton Richmond Borough, Rob Hall. The forward arrives with a wealth of experience, having played in the top five tiers of English football. He's also won silverware at international level, winning the 2010 Under-17 UEFA European Championship with England's Under-17s. Under He's also won promotion from League One with MK Dons and was runners-up in the EFL Trophy with Oxford United. Avonton Waterlooville, Billy Steadman. The 23-year-old can play on either flank or in an advanced midfield role. Last season, he was with Porter Down and scored the vital goal to keep him in the Northern Irish top flight. He's also played in the Southern League and in the Icelandic Second Division. Very interesting. Hemel Hempstead Town, George Williams. 
Following an impressive loan spell with the Tudors last season, Hemel Hempstead have made the winger a permanent signing. This exciting move demonstrates the ambition of the club to strengthen a core squad of players. George brings success from promotion with MK Donners to the Championship, where he was also the youngest appearance and score, the youngest scorer of the FA Cup um, of all time, I believe. Alongside that of his time in the Championship with Fulham and being named in the squad for Wales in Euro 2016 with a team that reached the quarterfinals. Although he didn't actually make an appearance, that is a slight caveat <laughs> in that competition. He has in other Welsh teams. Um, Hereford Connor Stanley, the creative midfielder, spent last season on loan with Bamber Bridge in the Northern Premier League. He's a player who allowed great quality to them and offer a different threat in the final third. He has techni brilliant technical ability and his personality is infectious too. Kingsley in Town, Kean Ronan. The 22-year-old right-back spent this summer on international duty for Gibraltar, coming against Kylian Mbappe while on international duty. He was in Gibraltar and football's pyramid last season, appearing in the Champions League as well. I think it was with Lincoln Red Imps. And for the senior national Gibraltar team, he's made 29 appearances. Ronan's energetic and can play in several positions. He's probably be used on the right-hand side, right wing back if uh, that's the formation they play with uh, he can also play in center mid as he did last season and he was desperate to come to the club and he had offers from the national league and national league south as well uh, so thanks to kingsland's geographical area really that's why he chose it he's got family in suffolk i think maidstone united lucas Coveland's sweeper keeper style with oh Coveland lucas is by the way his full name Sweep keep style will have the Stones fans on the edge of their seats if they do sit down, which is admittedly quite rare in non-league football. He comes in for crosses and is aggressive. He helps the team defend a high line and he has won the League 2 playoffs with Port Vale. I don't think it will be long till he's dubbed the non-league Edison and certain fans will remember the 2020-21 National League playoff final where he scored a stoppage time equaliser with a fantastic header, which did result in him having comparisons to Allison's header in a very similar like mind manner. I mean, it's still mad that in a playoff final, a goalkeeper could score. Peterborough Sports, Matt Tootle. Matt Tootle is a tenacious fullback, being comfortable on either the left or right positions. He can play as a winger. He's often praised for his work rate, athleticism, pace, stamina and adaptability, which all make him an integral part for most teams. He also comes in with pedigree, having won promotion from League 2 in 2011-12, then the season after won the EFL Trophy in 2012-13, and the season after that won the Player of the Season Award, all while he was at, with his time at Port Vale. Rushall Olympic, Jack, oh, sorry, Jake Weaver. He's been a regular at Step 2, having turned out for the likes of Hungerford Town, Kidderminster Harriers, Hednersford Town, although I'm not sure they were in the Step 2 at the time, and Leamington. He became a reliable and popular last line of defence for the breaks. This really good experience will help the squad, um, who's was very unexpected really to be in this league, considering the promotion, and can be seen as really a bit of a coup. He's already done very well, and he was a highly sought keeper as well, so they did sort of beat some competition for him. He's only conceded an average of a goal a game, and considering the calibre of defence in front of him, that's not actually bad at all. Scarborough Athletic, Alex Perver. Perver, who has enjoyed a successful two years with Darlington, has picked up both the Players' Player of the Season and Supporters' Player of the Season award last season. He is a centre midfielder who reads the game very well, disciplined in his position. He can break up play, but most importantly, keep the ball for them. He's a great trainer and does everything right. He loves the game and is a student of the game, hence why he's getting his coaching badges at the same time. He will add great experience and enthusiasm with the squad and drive standards up in games and training. The 27-year-old has impressed him in the National League North on three separate seasons, well, in three separate seasons in a row. So really quite a good signing considering everything. Scunthorpe United, Jason Law. 
The last season, the Academy product of Mansfield Town featured 24 times in League 2 of a total of the 54 games he made with the Stags. He had phenomenal success with the Academy, winning three Youth Alliance titles in a row. He's an attacking midfielder. He can also play on the wing. He's pretty versatile, left-footed, good on the ball, and he likes to get on the ball and make things happen. He's had a fair few loan spells, including in this league with Kettering Town in 2020, so he knows how tough a league it actually is. Slough Town, Johnny Giles. Johnny has previously played in League 2 with Oxford United and amassed over 100 appearances for Chelmsford City. Johnny was an integral part of Bishop Stortford team last season, which won promotion from the Isthmian League, scoring 18 goals in 80 appearances for the club. He is one of the best non-league players at the level below and is thought of extremely higher as a player, but also as a person also. Uh, Southport, David Morgan. As well as the first team benefiting from his vast amount of experience, he will also help out at the academy. The fans will know him as he was a fan favourite during his 136 appearance spell with Southport between 2017 and 2021, scoring 2022 goals. The highlight of this time must have to be of a 2019-20 season, where he appeared in the National League North team of the season and scored 11 goals and provided 7 assists. David is a good player. He can be an attacking or defensive midfielder. He's got a terrific shot on him and a good range of passing as well. He now comes in with a spell in the EFL with Atkinson Stanley in League One. He has also scored four goals and four appearances for Northern Ireland's under-21s in 20, back in 2012-13. South Shields, Luke James. Luke is a player with experience of playing in higher divisions, most notably with three different spells at Hartlepool United, where he remains the pool's youngest ever goal scorer, having netted a 25-yard volley against Rochdale aged 17 and 64 days. Yes, this is the beautiful South Shield pint glass you can get from the club for a deposit, I believe. Uh, that is only one goal from 31 goals James scored across six full seasons at Hartlepool. The 28-year-old has also had EFL experience with Peterborough United, Bradford City, Bristol Rovers and Forest Green Rovers, as well as a season in the National League with Barrow. <clears throat> He's a forward who works very hard and I'm sure he'll provide goals for the season ahead and is a great addition to the squad. Spennymore Town, Owen Gallagher. Or Gallagher. Well, We'll figure it out as we go along, shall we? The highly rated frontman spent last season in the EFL with Grimsby Town. A former Scotland international, he is best known for his spell at Burton Albion in 2020-21, or maybe in Gateshead in 2022 on loan. Admittedly, he's had limited appearances for each club, and he's only ever turned out only once, gaining over 10 appearances for a club. Like once having over 10 appearances. I don't know if that was best explained. But a pacey forward, though, does have experience in the EFL, and that from a 24-year-old is decent. His application, attitude, and character are amongst the first things talked about, and that he tips all them boxes. He will bring a real intensity off the ball, but when he's in possession, he's lightning quick. He likes to play on the shoulder and is very direct. That's the type of player wanted at the club. They want people who are fearless on the pitch, be positive and go and create chances. So I think Owen will be an exciting one to watch this season. St Alban City, Joe Partington. The defender began his career with ASC Bournemouth, making 52 appearances at the start of their rise with the EFL, having achieved promotion from League Two with the Cherries. During this time, he became their youngest ever goal scorer, scoring against Swansea City aged 18 years and four days. Furthermore, he gained international football exposure, having been part of the Welsh under-19s under and under-21s. He moved to Eastleigh, where his impressive performances led him to moving to Bristol Rovers in League One, racking up 53 appearances for the Pirates. Returning to Eastleigh, the defender has also had spells with Bromley, where he won the FA Trophy, Aldershot Town, where he was captain and was an ever-present, making 33 appearances. And Farber, where he started this season, making 10 appearances. 
He's played the last couple of seasons as a defensive midfielder, but is equally good as centre-half and right-back, so provides plenty of options. Tamworth, Callum Riley. Having earned promotion with Burton Albion from League One, he comes in with experience of League One and Championship football. The last season, he got a taste of National League North football with Banbury United. The central midfielder can also play at fullback and has represented Ireland's under-21s on the international stage. Taunton Town, Dan Lavercombe. The 27-year-old has spent the last three seasons at FC United and Manchester, with whom he made 102 appearances and last season won the Supporters Player of the Year. He's an established keeper, therefore they are hard to come by, especially in non-league, and even more especially considering he grew up in Devon and started his career with Torquay United, making 25 appearances in the National League. He's another great character to add to the existing ones in the group, really. Tunbridge Angels, Junaid Mead. The 27-year-old is predominantly left-footed, therefore is a strong defensive left fullback, who can also be utilised as a left midfielder. He's also an attack-minded fullback who likes to get forward and provide assists. He's turned out for Arsenal in the Champions League against Olympiacos and in the EFL Cup for them. He's also liked scoring goals as shown in 2014 when on loan with Hadley in the Spartan South Midlands League where he scored nine goals as a wing-back, earning him a move to St Albans City. Since 2020, he's been in the National League South, so comes in with lots of experience as well as being a Montserrat international. Torquay United, Lewis Collins. Initially arriving on loan at Plainmore in February 2023, Lewis went on to establish himself as a popular figure amongst the Yellow Army and was a key component in United's superb end-of-the-season form, making 15 appearances and scoring three goals during the final three months of the 2022-23 campaign. Collins arrives at Playmore on a permanent basis then, having previously made 87 appearances and scoring five goals for the League Two side in Newport County. A versatile player, he is comfortable playing up front on, or out wide and brings with him international experience, having featured for Wales under-21s. Truro City, Ryan Law. You look at him and think to yourself, he's got a great left foot and he's six foot one. He's a perfect type of player you're looking for really then as a left wing back. Certainly his quality of final ball is something worth boasting about. He's probably be employed as a attacking fullback with Truro, I imagine. He also comes in with a grand total of six loan spells, despite being only 24 years old in the typical southwestern clubs in the Southern League National League, including with Truro in 2019-20, making 30 appearances and scoring four goals. You could name the law of the land. Get it? Ryan Law? Oh, never mind. My comedic talent is absolutely wasted on you guys. Warrington Town, Peter Clark. Clark is a defender with power and good aerial ability. According to The Athletic, he has also mastered the dark arts of time-wasting, physical battles with forwards and words with referees. He's appeared in the Premier League with Everton, and despite his over 23 years senior career, he's only been promoted once in his life from League One with Huddersfield back in 2012. However, he has received plenty of personal accolades, such as the PFA Fans Player of the Year for League One in 2010-11, seven times win of a player of the season with five separate clubs of Blackpool, Southend United, Huddersfield Town, Bury, and Oldham Athletic. Bearing in mind some of these clubs may seem only impressive um, right now to us, but they were in League One at the time. <clears throat> but Southend, Bury, and Oldham. <clears throat> Only two seasons ago, he was lead in League Two's both for EFL and PFA teams of the season, which surely has to be a record for the oldest entry into those leagues, considering he was like in his late 30s, like 39 or something at the time. Well in United, Lee Worgan. The 39-year-old has racked up a huge amount of experience over a storied career, gaining reputation as one of the most consistent stoppers in non-league football, with well over 600 appearances under his belt, including two promotions with Maidstone United. Considering Wellin are going to go through a bit of a transition at the moment with the stadium plans and the like, he can provide the experience and knowledge of this level, which is an invaluable asset. 
He's not going to be playing every week and was more likely brought in for his goalkeeping coaching ability or capacity. Uh, but he'll play when called upon. And by the looks of it, more likely to happen than not, considering their woeful defence right now. Uh, he's hungry. He always wants to do well. And if that keeps happening, then he's in fine form to put the gloves on. He's also the best keeper in the National League South, in my opinion. Western Supermare James Morton. Tips as one of the most talented players when at Bristol City's Academy. I reckon there are still attributes he has when he can be which can be used in non-league. Morton is impressed with his range of passing and composure in the middle of a pitch. While he has now grown accustomed to senior football after several loan spells in non-league and league two. When at Forest Green Rovers, he was likened to an NFL quarterback, given his playing style of sitting deep in midfield and dictating play for his team. Indeed, his pass completion rate that season, 85%, was the seventh highest in the entire era of League Two, while his accurate 4.7 long passes per game placed him in the top 15 in that league. The former local rival's Bath City man is um, on the right path of it in his career, I think, and also explains his mindset and how I expect him to be picked out of non-league in the near future if people recognise his actual strengths. Weymouth, Josh McQuaid. Josh will be no stranger to the Bob Lucas Stadium, where he spent the four seasons at the club, amassing over 100 appearances and scoring 28 goals for the Terrors. He's played a huge part in their back-to-back -back promotions to their National League from the Southern League back a few seasons ago, and he provides great leadership and experience to the group. The name leapt out for me for his notable time at AFC Bournemouth, where he racked up three promotions over two spells with the Cherries, including helping them to the Premier League in 2014-15. The only reason he was a regular during that season was because the season prior he was on loan with Peterborough, where he won the EFL Trophy. He has also has had international pedigree, having appeared five times for the Northern Irish senior national team. Worthing Greg Lure. Evans been with Hull City, but only making five, three appearances in the Championship and struggled to make any mark in loan spells across the lower EFL and National League. He left and joined Woking, then in the National League South, but helped them put a promotion via the playoffs, making 33 league appearances and scoring nine goals. He then moved to Worthing's local rivals, Eastbourne Borough, where he amassed over 130 appearances and scored 28 times. Greg is therefore a player with real quality at this level. He's a local lad from Brighton and therefore gives some real competition in forward areas. It will be a real asset for them as he can play anywhere across the front line and has already been praised for his versatility by Adam Hinshelwood this season and he suits how Worthing play down to a tee. Finally, one of the greatest players on this list though, Yeovil Town Frank Newball. The experienced forward adds extra firepower to the Glover's front line. After making a splash in the National League last season, scoring three in nine appearances for Torquay United, he remains in the southwest with Yeovil. He will be a fantastic addition to the dressing room. You can see by his four goals in 12 just what type of player he is. With, and with clubs like West Ham, Coventry and Ipswich to his name, he will always be one of the, uh, to the that really turns the heads. Yes, he is a bit of a journeyman, and as the son says, he is, has more clubs than Tiger Woods, including some teams that I cannot pronounce, such as Tianjin Songjiang and Ni Mongol Zhongyu. See, absolutely nailed it. As well as plenty of lower, typical lower EFL teams, it could be considered a coup that he's dropped this far down into the pyramid. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe if you're new around here. That would be hugely appreciated. We are well on our way to getting 120 subscribers. Um, there's lots of stuff coming in the pipeline. History of your club will come. It will probably be in November. Okay. Uh, I know some people have been calling for it and had a bit of mic issues and stuff before. They have all been sorted now. Uh, and in terms of what I'm doing next in terms of a bit of trivia. I've got a few things in mind, and maybe if your managers could only be manage what teams they played as, or maybe something about uh, sort of the journeyman of football, Jefferson, um, 
who I was going to mention, but he was recently signed for Beaconsfield, or maybe something else completely, I don't know, sort of difficulties in Southwest football, um, getting the right players, stuff like that. Just let me know in the comments down below if you've got any suggestions as well. Uh, but goodbye for now.